Hello and welcome to our recap of IAS 17 leases, also then looking at substance over form. So looking at IAS 17 first of all, what does this cover? Well it looks at all leases except those for minerals, oil and natural gas and those over licensing for films, videos and copyrights. All other leases covered under IAS 17. Classification of a lease, first of all, remember there's two types. Finance lease is where the risk and rewards of ownership transfer to the lessee, the person leasing the asset. Operating lease, all others. So how do we decide which is which? First things first, we looked at a finance lease. And if it meets any of these criteria, it will be a finance lease. If not, it will be an operating lease. So if the lessee owns the asset at the end of the term, it's a finance lease. If there's the option to purchase at such a low price that the lessee is reasonably certain to do so, that's a finance lease. If the term is most of the useful economic life of the asset, finance lease. If the present value of the minimum lease payments make up all of the fair value of the asset, again that's a finance lease. If only the lessee can use the asset without major changes, that makes it a finance lease. And lastly, if there's a secondary lease payment or period at such a low rent, well then that will be a finance lease. So those all indicate that it's a finance lease. If it doesn't meet those criteria, it will be an operating lease. So how do we deal with it? Well, the lessee treatment will be, first of all, for a finance lease. At the start, well, we need to create an asset because the risk and rewards of ownership have transferred to the lessee, to the person leasing the asset. So you're going to have to capitalise an asset and a liability. So we debit an asset and credit a finance lease liability. We do that with the lower of the fair value of the asset and the present value, the discounted amount of the minimum payments on the lease, whichever of those is the lowest. During it then we will have a charge to the income statement for a lease interest. Also we'll have to reduce the finance lease liability with the cash that we paid. So during the year we'll pay some cash that will reduce our liability. We also then, don't forget, need to depreciate the asset as usual. So we did all of this in illustration one in the lecture. Remember then, if it's not a finance lease, it will be an operating lease. Operating leases, we recognise the lease as an expense each year. So the amount we paid as an expense. However, we don't do it on a cash paid basis. We do it straight line over the term of the lease. So the total amount due divided by the number of years of the lease will be the amount that we recognise as an expense each year. So we don't do it on a cash paid basis, we prepay or accrue the difference. So we had a look at how to do that in illustration 2. A couple of key aspects then on a finance lease, remember we need to capitalise the asset. So if we have a finance lease we need to capitalise the asset, whereas if we have an operating lease, well, we don't have to capitalise the asset. Now, it's not the asset that the company might be tempted not to classify, it's the liability. They may not want to have that big liability on their balance sheet for the finance lease. So they may be tempted, therefore, to classify it as an operating lease. However, substance over form, as outlined in the conceptual framework, disallows us from doing that. So what are we talking about here? This is that financial statements should reflect the economic substance, not merely the legal form of a transaction. So they must show what's really happening. So if we have a finance lease that meets the criteria, we must show it as a finance lease, not as an operating lease. So why has this come about? Well, it's to avoid that manipulation of the accounts. By reflecting the legal form only, we could sometimes have a manipulated the accounts. For example, we could get a legal document that said a lease was um, an operating lease, when in actual fact, uh, the substance of the transaction was that it was a finance lease. So we would need to reflect the substance of the transaction. So for example, not capitalizing a lease would be a problem. So substance of this, remember, is looking at who gets the benefit of the asset. Back to the framework, who gets the benefit of the asset, they should capitalise it. Who's taking the risk and rewards of ownership? Again, under the framework, they should have the asset.
So we looked at consignment inventory. Remember, this was inventory that is owned by one party and held by another. For example, a car dealer. So um, Mercedes, for example, have car dealers. And what they do is they make the car and send them out to the dealers who sell them on their behalf. Who owns that inventory? Well, what you'd need to ask yourself is, uh, number one, who bears the risks? So, for example, of prices falling, of damage to the cars. Who gets the benefit, i.e. the profit, when it's sold? Whoever gets the risks and the benefits owns the inventory. So you need to look de in detail at the contract. And we did that in illustration three. We also talked about sale and lease back of assets. So selling them and leasing them back on a finance lease. Well, what we had to do on that was take the excess of the proceeds over the carrying amount, i.e. the profit, and we deferred it and amortized it over the term of the new lease. So we debited cash, we credited the asset to remove it, and the difference between the two, the profit, went to deferred income, and we released it over the term of the lease. We then created a new finance lease with the new fair value of the asset, debit the asset, credit the finance lease, and treat that as a normal finance lease. And we did that in illustration four. Also be aware that we could have a sale and lease back on an operating lease. A sale is recorded and the asset is de-recognized and then the lease rentals taken to the income statement as usual. Also look for uh, instances where we have sale and repurchase of an asset. This may be an attempt to disguise a loan so the asset is sold with an agreement to buy it back in the future. Well, substance over form dictates that we need to check, is this a sale or is it merely a loan? If it is a loan, the substance of the transaction is a loan, we need to treat it as such. And we looked at that in illustration five. So that was a recap of our lecture on leases and substance over form.